next item is um, elementary and secondary. Uh, we're going to start out with Envoy update, Dr. Wolverton and Carrie Rock. Good evening. Welcome. Good, good evening, Chair Heidemann, Superintendent Law, members of the board. This evening, we are very honored to come before you and do a presentation on Envoy implementation, specifically tonight focusing on one site in our school district, Eisenhower Elementary. Um, this evening, the goal for our presentation to the board is to provide information to you on what exactly is Envoy. And um, secondly, to provide information on what are the results from our program pilot that gives us confidence that we are achieving our intended outcomes. And in that, two things that you will see in this presentation is one, a significant impact on the decrease of referrals to the office, resulting in more time in the classroom for our students. And secondly, the correlation to that with student achievement. So at this time, I'm thrilled to introduce Carrie Rock, Principal of Eisenhower Elementary. Good evening, Chair Heidemann, members of the board, and Superintendent Law. I couldn't be more thrilled to present this information to you today, and I want to first introduce the team that's presenting with me, Jennifer Mayers, who is the elementary envoy coach and also an instructional coach at Crooked Lake Elementary, and Amy Reed, who is the assistant principal at Rum River Elementary, who is also very skilled in implementing envoy. We also have some of our envoy demonstration teachers here today that I'd like to introduce as well sitting in our audience. Two of them will speak to you later about how this has impacted their work, and then some others in the audience. So John Mayers, who's a fifth grade teacher at Eisenhower, Heidi Peterson, who's a third grade teacher at Eisenhower, and Jackie Slocum, a first grade teacher at Eisenhower. So what Envoy is, is really professional development for teachers on how to manage their classrooms non-verbally. And Eisenhower is one of only two demonstration sites in the nation. So we are one of only two schools that have gone through a very rigorous um, certification process to become a demonstration site. And what that includes is work in four different domains. So first talking about our licensed staff, our teachers. 100% of them are trained in Envoy. 80% of them are certified Envoy practitioners, which Jen will talk about next. And 20% of those teachers are demonstration teachers. Our non-licensed teachers are our paraeducators, which support students in special education, in the lunchroom, at recess, and in other parts of the day. 100% of those are also trained with at least 80% certified. We've also done considerable work to become a demonstration site on our common spaces, looking at hallways, cafeteria, the re and recess, as well as bathrooms and other parts that all of our students utilize. And our goal in those spaces was to be calm and safe. And then school administration needs to do some work with Envoy as well. So I am an Envoy certified, and I'm also an Envoy coach. And then in order to increase sustainability with the program, we have four coaches at our site that we have trained internally and one Envoy trainer. Envoy stands for Educational Non-Verbal Yardsticks. About 93% of our communication is nonverbal. And by nonverbal, what we mean is what you do with your body, facial expressions, gestures, breathing, voice. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. About 7% of our communication is verbal. Envoy helps teachers use their words so they're meaningful purposeful, and deliberate. Teachers use their words for curriculum and management, as well as building relationships with students. There are three levels of teacher certification in Envoy. A teacher is certified in Envoy when they can demonstrate the seven gems in one lesson in real time. And the seven gems are incorporated into all four phases of, the t of teaching. The first phase is getting attention. The second phase is actually the teaching component where teachers deliver curriculum. The next phase is transitioning the students to either seat work or independent work where students engage in the activity that the teacher has assigned. And the last phase is when students are working independently. Teachers then can then choose to become a host teacher. A host teacher is a teacher that's certified in Envoy 
and they welcome visitors into their classroom so they can observe them implementing their Envoy strategies. Teachers can also choose to be a demonstration teacher. A demonstration teacher is certified, and they have gone through the certification process at least five consecutive times with four or more people observing in the classroom. They've also, um, they also have been, they also have participated in advanced trainings and have applied skills that they received in those trainings in their practice. They have the ability to demonstrate the most recommended way of utilizing Envoy versus the least recommended way. And this is very powerful for them to be able to do that when they have visitors in the classroom because it helps the visitors see how impactful Envoy skills are on the students. One of the major misconceptions about Envoy is that the school must be quiet or even silent. This, however, is not true. One of the main purposes of Envoy is that the school is safe. And school can be safe and social or safe and productive in each different aspect of the school day. And that is something the school decides. It can also, the volume level within the school day and within the environment that the students are in can vary. So you can have a safe and social and quiet time. You can have a safe, social, and more moderate time. The school always chooses. It does not have to be quiet. It looks at what is the purpose and what are you trying to get at. For example, at Eisenhower Elementary, at our arrival in the morning, that is a safe and social time as students greet their friends and get ready for their day. One of the other pieces I want to talk to you about is a little about our journey towards becoming a demonstration site. This has been over a three-year process that we've done to um, get our staff and our school to this level of high implementation. We started out and we were in the launch phase. And during the launch, staff had the opportunity to participate in the Seven Gems training and had the opportunity to visit an, the other demonstration site, Elizabeth Hall in Minneapolis. And they also had the opportunity to have coaching with our consultant in order to implement these practices into their daily work. During the build phase, we became a certified school where over 80% of our classroom teachers were certified as Envoy practitioners and were able to demonstrate the seven gems. Last year, we were digging deep and trying to sustain our work. We had teachers, or staff members who were certified as, uh, as Envoy coaches. Um, again, we were a certified school, and we really worked on those common spaces so that children had a cohesive experience going from teacher to teacher and also within all areas of their school day. And then uh, this fall, we became a demonstration site by going through that rigorous certification process and um, continuing to do that work. And now we have a number of staff and um, from other schools in our district that come to visit and see the work that we're doing. And then eventually we'll get to the release stage where we're able to sustain this work on our own independent of our consultant and really continue to impact the lives of our students. Mm -hmm. Robert Marzano links classroom management as the number one variable that um, is first in terms of its impact on academic performance. We are pleased to share the positive data findings at Eisenhower that align to Marzano's research and are directly related to Envoy implementation over the past four years at Eisenhower Elementary. In order to frame our conversations, we're going to look at the data over the past four years, and this data shows that the student population, as well as students who receive ESL and special education services, and students who qualify for free or reduced lunch has remained consistent over time during the implementation of Envoy. Over the same period of time, student achievement has increased 57.2% in relation to the multiple measures ranking data, which consists of student proficiency, student growth, and reduction of the achievement gap. In the years of Envoy implementation, Eisenhower has been designated as a reward school by the Minnesota Department of Education, which places Eisenhower in the top 15% of all Title I schools in the state of Minnesota. This final piece of data demonstrates a significant shift in student discipline incidences with an 84% decrease in student dismissals 
and suspensions from 2011-2012 to 2014-2015 through January 16th of 2015. As licensed and non-licensed staff have become even stronger in their ability to manage students with Envoy, the byproduct is that children are engaged in learning more of the time. So listed before you are the 10 demonstration teachers at Eisenhower Elementary who have um, worked to um, implement this into their classroom and I'd like to invite two of them forward to share how their work with Envoy has impacted their professional practice and they are John Mears, fifth grade teacher at Eisenhower and Heidi Peterson, third grade teacher at Eisenhower. Thank you for coming and sharing your feedback. Welcome. Good. Thank you. Thank Good you. evening. Thanks for having us. Yes. Good evening, Chairman. Um, Chair Heideman, Superintendent Law, and members of the board. It is an honor to come here tonight and um, express my Im the impact that Envoy has had on Eisenhower Elementary and my teaching practice. The use of nonverbal communication really allows for that verbal communication with the content and curriculum to really be heard by the students. Gestures are easily understood by the students, and they quickly get them back on track with little to no interruption of instruction which again allows more time to focus on the content. Two things that really resonate me with Envoy is that having a calm classroom where safety is first. The atmosphere in the classroom is very calm and students know what to do at all times. There's always a place for them to look if they're not sure what they're supposed to be doing. They also use these nonverbal communications with each other. When my students line up for class, if there isn't, if when they line up, <laughs> excuse me, if there is not space, they use nonverbal communication to indicate that they need more room. There isn't, oh, you butted, you know, there's not any pushing and shoving. They literally stand there and the students back up. This isn't something they did, of course, on day one, but with the implementation and them seeing the success in that, it's been amazing. <laughs> excuse me. Um, also, safety. Safety, the Envoy implementation really has built a safe environment in my classroom. It builds the relationships and it gives the students the opportunity to be responsible and respectful, which I think is extremely important that we're teaching our students as being members of society those things. The smooth transitions really allow for more time to focus on the curriculum and using the gems that are provided in Envoy are extremely helpful. For example, when I when my instruction is over and I go to release my students into the activity, there's always exit directions that I articulate with the students. Then I give them time to ask questions. During that time, the students ask purposeful questions so they really know what it is that they are supposed to be doing. I then release the students to the task, and I stand there for about 20 seconds, which is called the most important 20 seconds. And that really gets those students on task. Those students are going to get up to go to the bathroom, the students that have a cut and they need a tiny Band-Aid for something that you can barely see. <laughs> and once they are on task and they are learning, and I start moving around the classroom to make sure that they're doing that, they forgot that they had to go to the bathroom. They don't need that Band-Aid anymore, and they are engaged in the learning. So once again, I'd just like to say the impact that Envoy has had in my classroom, making independent, successful learners that really know what they are doing and the impact that they have in their classroom and with their classmates. Jen talked about some of the other staff development we've had on that, and that's kind of the part of Envoy that I enjoy, was um, some training from Jackie Brickman about the healthy classroom. And to me, that is the life skills that these students are going to need, and it's how to work as a team and how to get along and build those relationships. And that's the fun part of it. As educators, I think it's our job. You can't force anyone to learn. You can't force anything on them, but it's our job to create opportunities for them. And... Envoy in the Healthy Classroom creates that. And when you get them participating and motivating them to participate in these wide variety of opportunities, you see the confidence grow. And when they get the confidence, you get the positive attitude. And the positive attitude leads to some perseverance. And all that fits together, comes to really what we want is for them to take pride in what they're doing. And when you get them to take the pride in what they're doing, that's the life skill that's going to help them be successful. And to me, I think that's cool. I think it's fun to be a part of. And that is rewarding and why we do the job. So I bought into the Envoy, the healthy classroom, because I saw it work. People have asked, you know, why a demonstration teacher what? And 
I don't know besides it works. Um, it started with Jackie a handful of years ago not certifying me the first time she came in my classroom. <laughs> my most important 20 seconds was about five seconds. My exit directions, you know, weren't clear enough for her. So I remember what she said that. <laughs> but I um, went home that night, and when we self-reflect on, on what we're doing, it made sense. And I thought, you know, if this is going to what's best for children, then I'm willing to give it a shot and buy into it. And when you see it work, it sells itself because the kids are growing, they're developing, and it's fun to be a part of. So it's a great program. It's, it, we've done wonders for children. We're proud of that. Thank you both for sharing your comments, and I couldn't agree more. We're just exceptionally proud of the students and staff at Eisenhower and how hard the staff has worked implementing Envoy and really making a difference for our students. This time I'd like to turn it back over to Dr. Wolverton. Thank you, Carrie. Um, as we finish up, before we turn it over to for comments and questions, I'd like to share some data on one other school that we don't have represented here, Evergreen Park. Um, in 2011-12 school year, Evergreen Park, um, percentage of students living uh, that qualified for free and reduced was 82%. 46% of those students speak English as a second language. In the 2011-12 school year, Principal Cheryl Ray had 1,489 referrals to the office. They had not started the Envoy um, implementation. Two years later, the referrals to the office were decreased by 1,200. They went from 1,489 referrals to 239 referrals. Return on investment, kids are in the classroom, in front of their teacher, receiving powerful instruction. Since, um, as we looked at that, the other piece we thought about is what is the correlation to student achievement? At Evergreen Park, since the federal legislation on No Child Left Behind and the impact of or um, implementation of sanctions on schools not meeting AYP, Evergreen Park, every single year of those sanctions has been on the list. This is the first year in their third year of implementation that they have not been on a list for AYP. The staff in that school and the students are seeing the great results and impact of doing two things, having healthy classrooms where the classrooms are well managed and that the teachers are building powerful relationships with their kids. Um, we're aware of the fact that the board has a number of questions um, in addition to our presentation this evening. One is, is how is this in relate how is the implementation of Envoy in relation to our balanced scorecard? How do the financial expenditures look to date in relation to our implementation? How are we planning for sustainability and maintenance? And impacts, if any, on other identified areas of need in relation to elementary curriculum and programming. So what we would like to do is come to the kayak meeting on January 29th, start a conversation um, with the board on some of those questions, and then come back to the board at the next school board meeting or the one shortly after that. And then at this time, I think we'd like to open it up for comments and questions. <clears throat> board members, any comments? Mr. Fields. Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you guys for all the great work you're doing. I was just curious, do you guys see this being implemented in any uh, degree programs, such as out of the University of Minnesota going forward? Or where is this, where is this going, do you think? That's an excellent question. Um, maybe, what, two months ago, Superintendent Law? Um, Superintendent Law met with us at Evergreen Park and brought forward an opportunity for us to partner with the teaching program at the University of Minnesota at Evergreen Park. So currently we have, I think, next week or within the next week or two, 24 um, teaching or students that are in the field of education that are getting their um, teaching, working on their teaching degrees at Evergreen Park. And um, what they are going to be doing in that is having an exposure to Envoy. And then um, we are trying to look at partnering. I don't know if Jackie has heard this yet, but trying to partner with some of our local universities to see if we can provide some opportunities for student teachers to have this as a part of their professional development. Mr. Simon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Carrie. Um, and all of the presenters tonight, it was absolutely a wonderful presentation. And I think I saw a little bit of the Envoy happening over there, so it was very effective. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, 
you know, I've, I've spoken to a lot of teachers who have had the opportunity to take training, and um, every single one of them have, have praised Envoy. So thank you for this. Um, the only question I came away with you had some data points about the success, and I'm wondering if um, a data point that might be um, good to look into is teacher satisfaction, job satisfaction, because I would think that classroom management and hallway management and all of that, if if you have a calmer classroom and you can actually do your job and not be doing as much discipline, I would think teachers and all staff would have much more satisfaction. So maybe you've done that. I see some nods out there, but um, I would definitely be interested to hear about that too, so thank you. I think that's a great question, and what we could do is um, look at a survey with teachers who have gone through Envoy implementation or training and implementation. I'm smiling because I remember a conversation, I believe, with Jackie at a site visit maybe a year or two ago, and I remember one of the comments she made that still stick out in my mind, and that is at the end of the day, she feels less stress um, in her classroom because of her ability to have a well-managed classroom. And then the most powerful thing, I don't know if you remember this, Jackie, the other piece that she said that resonated and I still remember is that I am now able to get through much more of the curriculum and the assessments and the delivery of instruction than I was before because I'm spending less time on managing behavior. Board members, any other questions? Mary, could you talk a little bit about other school districts and how they are uh, implementing Envoy? Do we have a good feel for where we stand at statewide? Um, I would probably have to gather some more data on that. Okay. I know that, and I can um, check with you know some other um, districts, but I know when Superintendent Law was in White Bear Lake, you could probably speak to that a little bit. I think this is one of those areas where we're innovative and we're a front runner. Lots of schools are looking for ways to spend time focusing on uh, instruction versus student discipline. Certainly the other side of this story is the story that's been in the press all through the fall about districts that are overemphasizing on discipline and trying to, trying to reel back in their st student management. This is a story about uh, less time on management and more time on that's instruction. So we are one of the three districts in the state moving in this direction and, and certainly we have had uh, some of the best results. Mm -hmm. so far and then I, I heard uh, three-year implementation what's the end state Carrie do you see for Eisenhower give me a idea what that looks like well we are not um, that's kind of hard to answer because having not been through the process yet I'm not sure when when exactly the end state will come you know it's the, our first time fully implementing certainly we are well positioned to be able to sustain our work on our own, but we still continue to get great value from working with our consultant, especially as our staff become more skilled in this. They're, they're always wanting more and have more questions and find ways that they can dig deeper into that. And I, as a building principal, want to be able to support my teachers in that work when they have a request. So um, I don't know exactly when the end point will be, but we certainly are well positioned to be able to sustain this work on our own by the work that we have already done. And so when we look at this district-wide, do we expect every school to get to this level? It seems like maybe this is an example of maybe overachieving uh, to some respect. <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like you're, you're one of the first schools to achieve this status. I'm just curious if that's the end state for all of our schools or where does sure, that? Sure, that, that's an excellent question. At this point, what we have um, done with our schools and as well as particularly with teachers is that this has been an option for teachers um, and the funding for it has come from their building staff development funds. And so that has a, a set process on how those funds are allocated and it's site determined. In that, what we are doing is looking at how can we afford this opportunity in every school. And what we are finding is, as um, Director Simon noted, is good news spreads. Um, I'd have to say in all of my years in education, it is the one professional development 
that I have only heard positives about. Teachers find a, an immediate impact on their practice the next day they go into the classroom. And so that good feedback and that good um, immediate response on how it impacts them professionally has been spreading from teacher to teacher across our district. And I know even last week we had um, a principal's meeting where we were working on some strategies, some envoy strategies, and invited some of our middle school colleagues that joined us on that day as well. And so there's great interest, not only with um, elementary, but also our secondary staff. Mm -hmm. So when you roll out uh, a program like this, give me a feel for what, what the, what's the capacity. So you have certain finite resources for staff development. Do you consume 100% of those resources, or do you have leftover capacity to deal with other uh, pressing issues that you might have? Well, I think, you know, the, the way I look at it is um, looking at what are the needs in your building and what do you need to address and... When I think about the needs in the building, there are always things that are going to come up that you didn't anticipate that kind of become an immediate need. This um, implementing Envoy is a systemic process, so you can't funnel all of your resources to that because if you do, you won't be able to address the needs, other needs that may okay. that you may need to address. Okay. So I think, you know, I know myself, I look at all of those pieces and then try to put the best plan in place. Well keeping a kind of a contingency plan also out there for things that I didn't anticipate would come up. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly not the only area of professional development that staff needs, but we are also well positioned in our buildings with the use of our literacy resource teacher, our math recovery intervention specialist, and our instructional coaches to support um, the instructional needs of teachers. I mean, we just have an outstanding team at the elementary level that can really provide teachers with just-in-time professional development when they need it. And it's unlike anything I've ever seen, having worked in another district. You can't match the amount of support we can give our teachers at the elementary level. And I would add one other piece to that, and that is QCOMP. So teachers have several levels of support in relation to professional development as well. And I'd also like to extend an invitation to any of the members of the board who'd like to come and um, see our work with Envoy, because really you get a really good sense of what it looks like and how the impact it has at a school when you see it in action. We've had a number of schools send staff out to do um, what we call a site visit, and, um, and if any of you would like the opportunity to do that, we would welcome that to, sh to show you the work that we've been doing. Okay. Board members, any other questions? And then we'll cover some of the other topics Absolutely. in CAKE. Okay, great. I would probably just add one more thing as um, Carrie was talking. Um, one of the things that we have done this year um, in all of our elementary schools that have Level 3 EBD center-based programs, as well as our launch programs um, some serving students with autism, we have gone through a process working with the special ed staff where all teachers and all paraeducators in those programs are going through Envoy professional development. And what we have seen play out in those center-based programs this year has been remarkable in relation to service to students um, and reducing um, number of critical incidents. And what we are in the planning stages now is doing the same thing in our nine DCD center-based programs next year as well. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank and I did much. like the presentation, too. It was nice looking at the charts instead of the view graphs. Or, well, that ages me, so I mean the, the PowerPoints. But uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Yeah.